Hey everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. So we have yet another installment of something you ought to know. Now I mentioned that I was going to be doing this in morning coffee today. Today is the 17th of March. Um, and as I was saying that it was 17 seconds on the counter. That's kind of funny. Anyway, um, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it. I just felt like it was necessary. I felt like I had an urge to do so. And that is the whole premise of this series here on my channel. Something you ought to know. It's not sign specific. It is not date or time specific. There isn't even a regular schedule to it. This is just whenever a message for the collective is meant to come through, it will come through. So that's what we have right here, right now. I don't even know what we're gonna be talking about here, but however, I mean, I guess I could say there is a little bit of, well, if you're watching this now, you already know what the title is. So you probably have a better idea of what the reading could be about than I do at this current moment, only about one minute and 11 seconds into the video. Um, don't know what we're gonna be talking about. So be prepared for it to be anything. Yes? All right, kids, let's get started. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. There is a message out here for us that you're trying to get to us. So, lay it on me. <laughs> Thank you so much, spirit. All right. We're going to start with the secret language of light. Let us see. Let us see what we've got for the kids. One last shuffle. All right. What messages, what message, where do you, what should we know right now? What message do we do you have for us, spirit? First card out is soul writing. And initially the, the feeling that I get from this card is that all of this is already prepared for. Okay. We also have there is only light. Um, oh, and look, uh, well, let's get, okay. One more card, please. Spirit, there it is right there. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All right, cool. So, okay, I know where we're going with this. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. Even though I did say, yes, I have no idea what we're going to be talking about here. I was going to say, and I, I just never got to it, but I was going to say, given the current state of our world and society, with it being the 17th of March and this um, coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, is still working its way through the population and things are all in shutdown and it looks like things are getting pretty chaotic around here and we're preparing to to deal with the after effects of this of our society coming to a grinding halt right now for months to come uh given that is our current climate and i'm feeling the strong urge to really bring this message out here whatever the message is i don't have an agenda in what the message is going to be so i'm just letting spirit guide me here it could very well be about covid19 coronavirus and it's funny because spirit was telling me covid19 eric that's what we're going to be talking about here but i didn't want to say it i didn't want to admit it i didn't want to i didn't i did not want to set an agenda Whatever spirit wants to discuss with us, that's what we're going to discuss. So, what are the cards that we have here? Soul writing. There is only light. Healing. And at the bottom of the deck is wellness. So, what spirit is saying right now is this reading, this message should you choose to accept it is a way to quell the fear to tame the anxiety to put yourselves at ease but again you have to be willing to accept the message as it comes through 
and there is no shame, there is no judgment intended to be pushed upon you should you be unwilling to take the message or unable, should you find yourself just unable to, to fully accept the message. The fact that you're here listening to it right now is enough, okay? And there are healing transmissions that are being sent through this message right now here for you. So even if you just, you get too triggered and you can't listen throughout the whole thing, the fact that you find, found yourself here at least five minutes and 30 seconds into the video, you're good. That doesn't mean we're not inviting you to click off now, but if you should do so, don't worry about it. Plus, this video will always be here when you get back, where when you have, uh, when you're in a better place to accept it, okay? But with soul writing here, also in combination with there is only light, but I want to talk about soul writing. The first, soul writing is the first card that came out. Five, five, five on the counter, y'all. Okay. This is all planned for. It may look chaotic and messy and crazy, and we don't know what we're going to do with our lives moving forward. But trust me, trust us when we say there is a higher perspective here and we know exactly what is going on and we have a handle on it. You don't need to worry. Everything is going to work out for the greatest good of all. And right now, that greatest good is healing and wellness. Okay, but keep in mind, guys, there is only light. Yes, we live in a dualistic reality, meaning there are going to be opposite poles. Yes, there are going to be, there's going to be the good to balance out the bad. There's going to be the happy to balance out the sad. There's going to be the dark to balance out the light. But understand that everything originates from the light. And without light, you can't have darkness. There is only light. You don't have to fear. I'm trying to find another way of saying it other than just saying there is only light, but that's kind of the message. There is only light. You don't have to worry. Even if you do get sick, even if you do lose a loved one, due to this virus, due to this outbreak, due to this pandemic, whatever you want to call it. Keep in mind, and I don't mean to be insensitive here, but keep in mind that everything that lives must die. Also, to be quite blunt, honest, bluntly honest, we're all going to die someday, right? Okay. But it is all part of a greater plan. You don't have to fear. And even in me saying that, even in that part of the message coming out here, I'm not trying to forewarn anybody, oh, you're about to lose someone, so watch out. No, absolutely not. So please don't try, please try not to take it that way. Please do not take it that way, because that's not the way it was intended to be, to come across. However, it is a reality of the current situation. But think about how many more people have died due to the flu or other viruses that we're not keeping track of. Again, the message here is all that lives must die. So there really is no reason to fear death. And another thing that spirit is pushing me to say is those who choose to leave the earth at this time during this, pan during this pandemic was just that, their choice from a higher perspective, soul writing. All of this is planned for. All of this is taken into account. Everything is being controlled and guided and healed from a higher perspective, from a higher power. Whether you want to believe in that higher power or not, that is your choice. But there is a greater intelligence that keeps everything in existence flowing. Okay? That's the point here. So moving forward, I want to talk about healing specifically, okay? I'm going to start with the Sacred Destiny Oracle. I'm going to see what key words are in that or in the intention of this healing card showing up in this reading. 
So what deeper information, understanding, understanding or clarity can you give us, Spirit, in terms of this healing card? There is massive healing that's happening here. And I will I'll put a card up at the top right of your screen. But this is exactly what we were talking about in Morning Coffee today. If you haven't gotten a chance to do so, or if you're new to my channel and you don't watch Morning Coffee, Morning Coffee is my daily reading, energetic collective reading. This is exactly what we were talking about today. Everything is coming to a grinding halt to give space for us to heal and get to the bottom of what it is we truly want to be doing here. This is a big reset. So it really isn't as bad as it seems. Again, there is a higher perspective that is facilitating great change for us right now, okay? But specifically, let's talk about healing. What can you tell us about this healing energy, please, Spirit? What can you tell us about this healing energy? Overall energy is happiness. And it may not see it this way, or you may not see it this way. It may not seem like it at the moment. But the healing, <laughs> the healing that is happening here is leading us towards change and ultimately greater happiness. Change is at the bottom of the deck, right? Well, it was at, right under happiness and so that's why I've taken it okay now looky here we have some of the same cards that came out in morning coffee today we've got truth we've got taking risks we've got action which actually was towards the bottom of the deck i just stopped by the time i got to this card because you know i was reading from the bottom of the deck and sometimes you could literally just pull the whole deck and it'll all be relevant but i stopped there all right these are three cards that came out during morning coffee today so obviously this message right here is an extension of what came through in morning coffee again if you haven't seen it i put a card up at the top right of the screen a few minutes ago but also there's going to be a link to it at the end of the reading, okay? But with that, you also have potential and flexibility. But you see, everything is kind of hinging on this flexibility right now. Because our system ain't too flexible, is it? As it currently stands. It's a little bit of a problem. The inflexibility of our system is kind of the antithesis of reaching your happiness. And no, it's not about, oh, you gotta work hard and, and grind and this, that, and the third, and you'll get there. We all know at this point, it doesn't work that way, don't we? We all know at this point, the system that we live under is beneficial to just a select few. So now, it is up to us to face this truth and to face our own personal truths and start taking some risks in terms of that. I just heard a plan of action. Oh, well, look, there's action right there. Put a plan of action into place. See the potential in your life and allow yourself to be flexible enough to go through the change so that you can find happiness. Now, there's another card down here that I want to show you guys that was right under change, which was under happiness. And that card is security. Underneath security, you have embracing. Underneath embracing, you have inner peace. Underneath inner peace, you have yet another card that showed up from morning coffee this morning, whether I was able, whether I mentioned it or not, but you have trust. You see, this is an example how you can just keep going because underneath trust is wisdom. Underneath wisdom is community. 
underneath community is success. Underneath success is freedom. And then there's solitude. We need this solitude right now. This solitude is going to facilitate miracles. Okay. But you see, I just, you see how you can totally go down a rabbit hole that way? All right, cool, that's fine. But my point, my point was that it's time for us to start embracing security from within, not from all these external sources. That, quite frankly, seem to be too prideful or too boastful to handle something when is necessary. Now, it always has, I guess it hasn't always been that way, but then current circumstances have made it so that Quite a few people's asses are showing, aren't they? Individuals that quite literally, according to their own selves, don't claim any responsibility. Huh. That's interesting. Okay. So you know what then? I'm going to brace, I'm going to embrace a sense of security that is directly connected to and anchored upon inner peace. Which means I'm going to do my own thing and trust in that. Trust in my soul. Trust in my potential. Take a risk. Follow my truth. Take a risk that will incite change and facilitate happiness in my life. It's cool. Really, it's fine. I mean, the point is that you've had this power within you all along anyway, right? You just handed it over. It's okay. That's all part of the journey because now you have the chance to take that power back. I know there are quite a few of you that are getting triggered AF right now because I keep scratching my face. But many of you know, I get, when I channel, my nose starts to act up. Happens to a lot of us. <laughs> okay, anyway. Moving forward, spirit, what's next? Activation deck, all right. Let's do that. One more, they say. Okay. Sacred geometry activations, please, Spirit. What is relevant to our... First card that came out is card number 32, which boils down to a five, and that is the card of Merkaba. The frequency of Merkaba supports our ability to use our consciousness to traverse into other layers of reality and dimensions. It activates our access to our Akashic inheritance as well, merging the totality of our experiences into our present to serve our higher, or excuse me, highest purpose. Now, this card to me, this card came out, um, I think it, it might have come out in the um, Something You Ought to Know reading that I did, the last one, or the first one that I did, okay? Um, but what this, when it, when it, I don't remember exactly when it came out, but when it came out the last time, the feeling that I got from it was, this is about our overall health on a grand scale, on a spiritual scale, on an energetic scale, okay? And from what this card says, it supports our ability to 
uh, to use our consciousness to traverse into other layers of reality and dimensions. It activates our access to our Akashic inheritance as well, merging the totality of our experiences into our present to serve our highest purpose, which to me just screams using, utilizing all of your power and not allowing it to be usurped, not allowing it to be uh, um, uh, siphoned, not giving it away to others with the hopes and the prayers and the beliefs that they'll take care of you. Yeah, we're moving into an energetic time-space continuum, or you'll call it fifth dimensional reality where we're all in this together, sure. But in order to do that, you've got to take your power back so that you can be of service. Not, other, not only to others, but to yourself, right? That's what I get from this card. And that's what I really feel like is being activated here for all of us. The totality of our power, of our being. Not fragmented. There we go. Next card we have is card number 18, Cosmic Flower. The frequency of Cosmic Flower activates our remembrance of the place we call home, the core from which we pour our magnificence out into the world. Yet again, another card of remembering the totality of our ability. Remembering who we are and where we came from. We are, each and every single one of us, is God, source, creator, in the flesh. Yes, we all have our different talents, we have, all have our different strengths, we all have different things that we bring to the table, but ultimately, we're all capable of creating exactly what it is that we want. We have card number 39, romantic love. The frequency of romantic love supports our journey to feel whole and complete through the experience with an reflection of a conscious lover. Hold on a second. Let me say that again. The frequency of romantic love supports our journey to feel whole and complete through the experience with and reflection of a conscious lover. Interesting, guys. Because when I first started reading this card, I was like, oh, wow, this is totally all about being in quarantine or having to be isolated right now so that we can heal ourselves and heal our bodies and get down to the core of we are to be, but then the end, to be better lovers. But then at the very end of the card, that's what it said. The frequency of romantic love supports our journey to feel whole and complete through the experience with and reflection of a conscious lover. But you can't be a conscious lover if you don't know who you are, right? You can't be a conscious lover if you haven't taken the time to isolate and really get down to the core of who you are and what it is that you truly want. So all of this is activating a sense of higher love, higher wisdom. At the bottom of the deck, you have card number 21, the divine feminine. The frequency of divine feminine supports our receptive, nurturing, and soft side, allowing it to express itself openly and helping us to connect to our intrinsic, intrinsic understanding of our connection to all of creation. Our connection to all of creation. None of us are in this alone. This is not supposed to be every man for his or herself every man, every woman for his or herself. This is supposed to be all of us in this together. And that is what is being activated here, you guys, at this moment in time. Okay? Next they're saying, let's go to the Angel Answers deck. If you have a question that you want to ask, go ahead and ask it now. If not, if you just want to sit back and allow the message to come to you, I'd advise that too. Whichever you choose to do. One more shuffle. 
Oops, try that again. Okay. What have you got for us, angels? Okay, at the bottom of the deck, you do have within the next few months. And what I get with that is maybe some of you asked when things are going to return to normal. And what I heard when I, saw, when I saw this card, I was like, yeah, that's what I heard. Within the next few months, things are going to return to some sense of normalcy. But keeping with the message that we had this morning with morning coffee, it's not going to be exactly the way it was in the past. There's no way that it can be. This is a moment in time where we're starting to see the discrepancies in our society, in our structure, whatever. It is time to make change. And this is the beginning of that. For sure. One of the main, one of the main aspects or elements to this right now is reciprocity, being in this together, being more caring and compassionate and, and, and open and of service to others so that we're all making sure that we're all taken care of, we're all good. Because ultimately we're all brothers and sisters. Yeah, I know that can seem a little incestuous at times, but hey, whatever it is, but it is, right? In spirit, we're all brothers and sisters. And here we have, ask for help from others. We also have, be assertive. This is not a time to be passive. This is not a time to just sit back and allow things to just, ah, it'll happen as it happens. No. Now is a time for us to make our voice heard. Now is a time for us to incite change. And we're all, we've all got to be in this together. We've all got to look out for each other. No, we are not going back to the old paradigm. It just ain't going to happen. Trust us. Trust. Because a year from now, everything is going to be totally different. Now, that could be one big answer for you. Or it could be answers to multiple different things. Take it as it resonates for you, okay? But what I want to look at is a year from now. So we're going to go to the Tarot for that. I feel like some of you are really being triggered right now because my face is so itchy. And one of the things that we're told is not, not to touch your face. And then me, of course, I am, I'm that energy where it's like, as soon as you tell me not to do something, now my next propensity is to do it. Now y'all know, y'all know if you followed me for a while, y'all know my nose and my face can get real itchy when I'm channeling. And what I'm picking up on here is it's quite triggering for some of you, but it needs to be. I don't know why. I'm just going with the flow here. So please understand, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to trigger you. But if it's happening, then that's something you got to look at, okay? You are capable. One of, the message, one of the main messages that has been coming through for the last few days has been, you are capable of maintaining your health just fine. Yes, I understand people are born with different health discrepancies, okay? But it's nothing you can't handle. I'm just going to leave it at that. But that was the message around getting triggered because I'm scratching my face. So there's that. Okay. So spirit angels, what do you mean by a year from now? Overall energy is the Queen of Wands. We have the Eight of Cups here. 
We have the Queen of Swords. We have the Six of Pentacles. And we have the world. What the Six of Wands is saying here is that with the Two of Wands at the bottom of the deck, What this is saying, now I was getting this before I picked it up and saw that the Two of Wands was underneath it. Initially, what the Queen of Wands told me is that we need to maintain our belief, maintain our faith, and hold the vibration of that which we are choosing to experience with this Two of Wands. And what is that experience? Greater reciprocity. Six of Pentacles. Walking away from all that does not serve this. Straight up saying... Because now, let's go back to underneath the deck. Because underneath the Two of Wands is, in fact, the King of Swords. So this isn't a situation where it's just like, okay, yeah, because maybe the Queen of Wands can be a bit impulsive and just be like, you know what, I want this. So I'm just going to switch it up and I'm going to do this now. It's not that easy. It hasn't been that simple of a decision that has been made here, Two of Wands. It's actually been one that we have gained a lot of insight around. We've maybe done a, little, a lot of research on. We've experienced for a long time. We've come to an objective point of view that this just cannot stand any longer. And thus we've made a decision on a collective scale from a higher point of view, if you even want to say it that way. We've made a decision to move forward, to bring an end the world, of all this lack of reciprocity. And so now that the objective part of the situation with the King of Swords has been completed and the choice is made, now is the time for us to start making the cuts. Queen of Swords. And to stay in the alignment, Eight of, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, Queen of Wands, and to walk away from all that does not facilitate this greater harmony, union, and balance. Yeah? A year from now, things are going to be totally different. We must stay in alignment with the choices that we have made. Okay, I'm going to close out the reading. I'm going to go to the Gaia Oracle for this one. One more shuffle then. All right. Oracle readings, uh, Oracle guidance, please, Spirit, to close out this reading. There we have it. <laughs> Card number 25. Liberation. Breaking free from a negative attachment. Card number 25, which boils down to a seven. Seven is luck, wisdom, and challenge. The seven card can represent, uh, I'm sorry, the seven, number seven can represent challenge. Very similar to that of the number five, which is all about challenge. However, when it comes to number seven, that challenge is different because it, it brings in higher wisdom. Okay. Okay. Whether you realize it or not, you have become too emotionally detached or dependent on someone or something, or you have allowed or inadvertently caused someone to get too emotionally attached to you. What at first seemed like a healthy re friendship or interest now seems to be taking over your life or is creating too much codependence. A situation that initially seemed like a positive has now revealed its negative side. This is, in effect, 
like a form of addiction. You are advised to examine this issue and then create some space between you. For your sake and the sake of others, you must do whatever it takes to break free from this negative emotional attachment. Initially, this may cause some resentment and even a sense of panic, but the end result will be worth it. When you manage to emotionally detach yourself from this issue, you will have learned a valuable lesson and this will serve you well in the future. There is an affirmation here. Please say it with me if you feel as though you must or you feel so inclined. I release myself from all negative attachment. I trust that this is for my highest good. I trust that this is for the highest good of all. I help others most by not allowing myself or them be codependent. I look at every situation in a balanced way. Let's say it one more time. I release myself from all negative attachment. I trust that this is for my highest good. I trust that this is for the highest good of all. I help others most by not allowing myself or them to be codependent. I look at every situation in a balanced way. All right, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this was helpful for you. If you are going through something and you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. But with that said, I love you all so very much. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.